everybody, it's Michaela over at the Flathead Conservation District. Thank you so much for tuning in today for one of our EnviroSpeak presentation videos. Today I'm going to be using the EnviroSpeak model here in front of me to talk about what a watershed is and different components that we might find in our watershed and then give a demonstration on talking about the different sources of pollutants that we might find on our landscape and how a runoff event, such as a rainstorm or snow melting in the springtime, can affect these pollutants and take a look at the larger impact that it has on our watershed. So let's start off with talking about what a watershed is. A watershed is an area of land where all the water in it drains to a body of water. So a body of water could be a lake or a river or even the ocean eventually. So there's a lot of different size watersheds and they can be only a few acres or they can be millions of acres. So living here in Flathead County, we are in the Flathead watershed and our body of water is Flathead Lake. So that means that all the water that we see on our landscape eventually makes its way to Flathead Lake. Now Flathead Lake is part of a larger watershed called the Columbia River watershed that eventually drains into the Pacific Ocean. And it's really important to remember that what we do in our watershed is gonna impact the people who live below us. So to start off, let's take a look at what is in our watershed. Right down here, we have a marina in our lake, an agricultural field with some livestock next to the river. We then have a factory, and we have a forestry area, a golf course, a shopping center with a big parking lot, construction zone, and a residential area with apartments and a house. So now that we know a little bit more about what a watershed is and about the different components that we will find in a watershed, let's talk about the different sources of pollutants that we might find across our landscape. So there are two main sources of pollutants that I am going to be talking about. And as I describe each one, we will be, I will be placing our different pollutants here on the landscape. So the first type of pollution that we're going to find on our landscape is called point source. Now this is pollution that comes from a single point on the landscape and it flows directly from pipes or other specific points into our waterways. So this could be an industrial plant or a factory. And it's important to remember that they typically need to get a permit to allow them to discharge pollution. The next source of pollution we're going to find in our watershed is called non-point source pollution. Now this is pollution that comes from a dispersed area across the landscape, making it a lot harder to identify the exact source of the pollution. Now there are a lot of different human activities that contribute to this, so let's identify some of them and then place them across our landscape. Our first pollutant is going to be fertilizer, so we might find this on our residential lawns to help keep the grass green. We're also probably going to find it over in our golf course area, again to help keep the grass green. And then lastly, in our agricultural and crop area, this will help for plants to grow. Our next pollutant in our watershed is going to be pesticides. Now this will probably also be in our residential areas to keep weeds and other pesty plants away. Also on our golf course. And then down in our agricultural area. Our next pollutant in the watershed is going to be loose soil and sediment. So this will be found in our croplands. Also down on the riverbanks where animals are going down to drink and eroding the stream banks. You could also find this up in our forestry areas if a lot of the trees have been logged. And then finally over in our construction zone uh, where dirt has been getting dug up. Our next pollutant is going to be animal waste. So we're probably going to find that in our residential area where people might have dogs. We also are going to find this over in our livestock area um, from manure from all the different animals. Our next pollutant is going to be vehicle residue. So this could be oil or grease or antifreeze 
for other substances that are coming off of our cars. So we're going to find this in our parking lot areas, along our roads, uh, from the boats, at the marina, and basically on most of our impervious surfaces. Our last source of pollution is going to be litter or garbage that we might find along our roadsides or in our uh, parking lot areas and all across the landscape. All right, so now that we've placed all our different types of pollutants on our watershed, both point source and non-point source, let's see what happens when it rains. So the water that moves across our landscape from a rain event or from when snow melts is called runoff. And what happens is it is able to pick up all these different pollutants and move them down the watershed and eventually into our body of water. So this can happen when fertilizers or pesticides are applied in excess, meaning the water can pick them up. Same with in areas without vegetation, so our construction zone, in areas that are deforested, or places that don't have any plants along the lake or the river, those can also cause the water to pick up that loose soil. All of the vehicle residue on our roads is going to get picked up by the water and taken through our stormwater drain and straight into the lake. And same with all of our other pollutants, the water is able to pick them up and transport them downstream. So when we take a look down here at our lake, we can see that it's dirty and polluted and it can give us a better understanding of how runoff can cause pollution to our waterways. So as I mentioned earlier, the water from our rain was able to move across our landscape and it picked up all the different sources of pollution that we find in our watershed and then it transported them downhill and eventually into our lake. Now, a lot of these pollutants might seem kind of small and that they might not have a big impact, but unfortunately, when they're multiplied, they can pollute our lakes and our streams to a point of concern for both human health and aquatic life health. So let's talk about why some of these pollutants can be really harmful when they enter our waterways. So the first is gonna be nutrients. So nutrients are gonna be coming from the fertilizers that we place, or also from all our animal waste as well. And when these nutrients uh, accumulate in our waterways, it's called nutrient overloading. And it can cause algal blooms that use up all the oxygen that is required for fish to survive. Uh, these pollutants can also contain different toxic substances, such as chemicals or metal compounds. So we might find these in our pesticides or in the oil or grease from our car that's on our roadways or from the factory discharge areas. And of course, since they're chemicals, they can poison our fish and other aquatic life. And then we also have bacteria. And this also comes from animal waste. So again, our dog poop or our livestock manure. And so when this is accumulated in the waterways, it can uh, be detrimental to both human health and to fish. And then finally, when soil gets into our water, it can make the water really cloudy, which is called turbidity. And this can make the water really hot and prevent light from getting very far in the water column. And this can kill fish and it can keep them from finding clean gravel to lay their eggs. So knowing that these different pollutants can cause such harmful uh, impacts on our, on our waterways, we need to try to do what we can to prevent them. So it's important to understand that we all live in a watershed that contributes pollutants to a water body. So we have point sources which are easy to control as we know exactly where they're coming from. But unfortunately, non-point source pollution is a lot harder to mitigate because it's dispersed all across the landscape. Luckily, there are ways that can prevent pollution through implementing different land management practices. So if you tune into our next video, you can learn more about these different ways that we can reduce pollution in our waterways.